This is the power of nationality. But people keep trying to buy that power through the UCC, which is another jurisdiction. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. It's another jurisdiction. But then they, they think that that has brought them the power that comes under the pedigree, under the blood, because of the associations that keep, people keep presenting them with. And it's not true. And so they really tricked you and you got more fiat and, and still when it comes to really claiming to be a surety holder, they're the first surety holder and you're second. There's no different than someone being a line in credit and you having to lean on me because I owed you first. You having to lean on me because I owed you second. You having yeah. to lean on me, owed you third. Mm -hmm. And so you say, now, see, man, I done discovered this thing, man. I'm going to make this instrument and everything. You just come and claim this, this. And I'm going to do this. And I'm going to get this account and everything. And then, then, then you know, and I'm going to go pay you and all this <laughs> stuff, right? <laughs> you know, and all this stuff. But when it really boils down and the claim, ain't nobody arguing because I didn't get you some more finance. Yeah. It's just like a <laughs> license. Oh, yeah. You don't need a license to they ask for it. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. exactly. So now when, it's, when the claim is made right, you're the first lien holder. Mm -hmm. I'm the I'm the surety holder. And then then you did say as a, as an example of this. This is where a lot of people lose with UCC's, UCCs and they don't even pay attention. And it's so obvious a child can understand. All right, I'm the surety holder, and I've got this instrument. See, because I'm happy to clown the second. <laughs> right here. So I'm the surety holder. Mm -hmm. And I filed this with you. In my proper person. Oh, you did, huh? Mm -hmm. Well, um, according to our records right here, and you, Joe Smith, you happy to clown the second and third? Is that in all capital letters? Yes, it is. Well, that ain't me. Oh, well, all right. You need to show your own insurance. It's given. No, they don't need to say this, right? Mm -hmm. and, you say, and you say, well, well, you just said you're a shorty holder in this? Is this you? Mm -hmm. No, that ain't me. Contempt of court, because now you're trying to steal them right in front of the court. Mm -hmm. So you just lost. They'll go through the motion and everything, but truthfully, you just lost. Because you, ca cannot, you cannot have a claim on a straw or any, anything that you admit in one breath that's not you but then you create an instrument to get a benefit from it because from it. you're not the original constructor of it. The original constructor owns that. Now, and, and by then being in a corporate entity, they protected themselves and they're hiding behind it. It's, yes, it's a, it's a deceitful instrument, but you didn't say that. You didn't disclaim it. You sort of benefit with it. All right? So now, what happens is when it while you've been holding this instrument, you transact, you transfer a third fiat with it. That's all cool. Now you're trying to claim. Now the claim is challenged. There's no. They don't argue every issue in the court. There's certain things that are assumed and accepted. The constructor of it is, and since you said it's not you, it automatically goes to, without argument, the original constructor of it. And it's not you because it's all capital letters and, and, and he, you can't accuse him that it's you mm -hmm. because you, you just said it ain't you. But you created an instrument trying to get a benefit, but that's his account. You didn't charge him with fraud, so that's not before the court. So that's not the issue. Right, we do create It's a legal fiction, mm -hmm. so it ain't nobody to argue in Santa Claus. Yeah. How do you live outside of the corporation? <laughs> Everything that we do outside of ourselves is corporate. Mm -hmm. Everything that we do outside of ourselves, that we give a personality and character to, is corporate. Mm -hmm. Now, your interest would be who is the owner of the corporation, uh, who's question. the beneficiary of the corporation, who's the constructor of the corporation, and who has legitimate claim within the benefit of corporation. Because corporations are created usually to transfer resources and finances, which is why they're created artificial persons. Like say the Moore Science Temple. Right? Moore Science Temple is a corporation. It's a it's a, a given a personality, given a mission of character to do certain things for specifically certain people who are members there too. Shareholders. Mm -hmm. Somebody can't just all the speech say, Oh, huh, this is Moore Science Temple America. I'm gonna make an instrument so I can become a party member. 
We didn't invite them in. That's right. They just committed a fraud. And this is what we keep doing with the with the with the straw man, with the birth certificates and everything. In the same breath, all the time while we're walking through this, saying it's not us, which is a conflict of claim mm -hmm. and a conflict of law. Mm -hmm. Now that's fine. The you just gave them some finance, and now when it comes to any claim made, you lose from the door. Yeah. If you understand the law of contract, you understand that. Do you create a trust though, in order to? Do all right, now even creating a trust, still creating a trust as contract is. Yes. What's the basis upon that trust is built? What's backing it? And with what authority? Whose authority? Who do you file it with? What I mean, sovereign kind of entity do you file it with? Oh. Originally, I'm go only asking the question because what we're doing, we're identifying parties. Right. And when you identify parties, you're identifying authority. You're identifying jurisdiction. You know, because for contract to exist, they must be identifiable parties. Right. right. You've identified you. Or write write the person. The person means corporation. Mm -hmm. Write the person that who who that you've made this construct and and and, and then show cause uh, that they were aware that what this was being constructed and they agreed to this and they signed it too. Right. So you have the same argument that you have to to, to argue a legitimate contract. So when you create the trust, you have the person who creates the trust. You create another straw oh, to try to make a legitimate argument on a straw that was created. You mean they can sign that contract through acquiesce also, right? Listen, listen very carefully. If I make a contract originally for any other filing to sign it with me, it's void. Yeah. I don't care how beautifully it's constructed. And this is back to, you know, the discharging debt for the Uniform Commercial Code because it's still the parties must be agreed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're, mm -hmm. re essentially what I'm really saying is, this is really actually what I'm saying, even though it may appear frustrating to us sometimes. And what I suggest to more is nationalize, organize, and make a uniform disclaimer and institute a suit national and international. And claim you being your proper person and reclaim your estate for the record whether they give it back to you or not or not and then work from there just how you've been doing and then let the forces take whatever course they want to take so you're creating a paper trail paper trail so you're sending it into the ethers mm -hmm. and you're declaring to the to the world that you are no longer minority you're competent to take care of your own affairs you know who you are and you're making every effort to be yourself and they are interfering with that process. They are violating the law, national and international. Okay. And then sue them on that and seek something from that account. Mm -hmm. Because now they are a party to this construct. Because you brought them in in suit to reclaim a right abridged or stolen. And that's how you can bring them into contract without their signature. You mm -hmm. cannot make a contract yourself, make claims seeking a benefit then file it and therefore now they're they are a liable party to that contract because they didn't help construct it right i.e you trying know. to put the lien on the birth certificate you mm -hmm. got to notify them too of the so exactly and, and and they have the option to agree or not agree because at the same time they have record and it is generally known that most people that do this have are seeking claim on this but they admit it and they have said that that wasn't them so it's not you why are you bothering with this why are you messing with this Exactly. There's a like bike on the street on the porch and we walk past. Is that your bike? No, that's not mine. Why are you going up on the porch to take it? Because it got my name on it. It's all capital letters. Is that your name? No. Exactly. Exactly. And so, and I, and I know out of frustration, you know, because we've been, you know, under this Inquisition policy that, you know, we're seeking all kinds of remedies. You know, because we're trying to survive, you know, on top of trying to maintain what we have. But the real deal is the whole key to this thing, truthfully, and we're being distracted, the key to it is nationalization. And all the remedy is actually right there. And what they're doing is putting other things that, that, that look like we can bypass this. Oh, that's not important. 
just do this and you can contract your way out of this. Now, once you nationalize... Now, stop right there. Once you nationalize... <laughs> now, let's take that and do like this. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a container. Let's sit it down. Mm -hmm. And before we go any further, identify what nationalization is and what nationality is, what it contains, what it contains, because it's spiritual and it's political, social. Mm -hmm. Name the component parts that make it up. Name the components that cause an effect in the interrelationships with others of other nations. Then talk about once we nationalize. In other words, everybody must understand what nationalization is. Yeah, great. Well, nationalization is not just the document. Nationalization is a state of mind. Exactly. Those who are of a nation, remember Noah Drawley told the Moors. Now look, pay attention to this. I'm going to show you the, the trick that he was calling for. The gold, the silver, and the commerce belong to the citizens and the citizens alone. What's your nationality? So why are you trying to nash? Why are you trying to make a uniform commercial contract with a farm operator who's operating under a color to gain that which was already handed to you by the profit? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You just gave them jurisdiction in a matter that never even resides with them, that in the same breath you claim was an unalienable. Now what is unalienable? No. What is unalienable? Your nationality. What is the word unalienable? Oh, I meaning the power given you by the creator. By your creator. What you is unalienable? Because that's part of nationality, that's part of what birthright is. Mm -hmm. That's part of the politics of birthright. The politics of birthright is that which is not alienable or transferable to another. What happens when you do a UCC to try to buy sovereignty? You just committed a violation of law because it's an act of contract servitude. And if you understood contract, you'd know what you just did. You put you gave the European corporations jurisdiction over your name and your nationality. That means you can't be a more except by contract. You just sold yourself. In the name of seeking a gain. <coughs> what Brother Dawood said, will and intent. Discover it. Under rule discovery. Just claim it. Just claim it. And if you're going to do anything about it, sue them for having created and putting a burden on you in a name that sounds like yours for the intended purpose of a constructive and act for them to seek a benefit as you because that's servitude. Mm -hmm. But if they can trick you into thinking that rather than recognizing that you should be suing them, you know, I'll let you you know what you can do is uh, you can get a, you can start tapping this account. So I won't talk to you directly, I'll talk to you through uh, an active group that appears to be not connected with me. Mm -hmm. You understand? So you think you're doing something to get back at me and etc. And all I want is some evidence of document by your hand that's seeking a benefit in this construct. Somebody else can, but you can't charge me with creating this fraud because you because you have to see yourself too. Because you're a surety holder. Even though you ain't never got a penny. We're just waiting to get your piece of this account. You, I mean, do you understand what I'm saying to you? We're just simply, our, the, the nature of our conversation is really the essence and the nature of contract, not necessarily the substance or the subject matter of the particular contract. We're talking about uniform commercial codes in general, and people keep on keep on trying to buy the straw man from the European to be a surety holder on the board with him. But they're going to get theirs. Did you, you understand? Because they're, they're already in process of this construction to fraud. It's just that we want to get in, in on the train. Mm -hmm. You know? How do you, the knowledge, once you have it, how do you live outside of it? See, it's how not, this is this is what it is. What, about what, what in Overdrawley, now we got to go back and look at what is the, the nature, the nature 
of what Noble Brawley did. And I think this is where what people don't really study 